Hi guys, it's Bob again, N9KR in southern Indiana, and I thought we'd take a look uh, today at uh, some experimenting I've been doing with uh, a technology that's kind of new, been around for a few years, and that's uh, software defined radio, SDR. Um, as usual, I'm always interested in uh, what you can homebrew around uh, certain aspects of amateur radio, and there's certainly some opportunity here on the cheap. Again, cheap is good. Um, at least a lot of times. So what we've got is, uh, uh, for those of you that are either not familiar with it or may have dabbled in it just a little bit, uh, uh, software defined radio uh, uh, micro miniaturization and advancements that have been made kind of go back to probably the soft rock uh, series of kits and, and small uh, radios that were available a few years back. Those went through uh, several generations and there's a great, great little kit that you could buy. And then the Fun Cube, the Fun Dongle came out, which was more micro miniaturization. And, and uh, now the latest thing is uh, uh, that's even more advanced, more fun per dollar, I think, is the latest uh, RTL uh, SDR little uh, USB dongles that you can buy. I got my last two for less than $10. Um, and uh, got one set up in a little experiment here that I thought we'd look at. And another one uh, actually on the on the shelf, trying to wait, wait to decide what to do with that one. But basically, um, to use these on uh, on, on HF, uh, these these cheap but uh, capable uh, little uh, dongles, these, it's a complete SDR radio on a USB stick. Uh, to use them on the HF bands, uh, 10 meters on down, you need some type of an up converter, and that's where there's a there's an opportunity there for us, I think, to to uh, homebrew something really cheap that'll do the job for us. So we've done just that and I thought we'd uh, take a look at some of the details here and uh, maybe it'll be a, an interesting a little video uh, for, for some of you folks. So let's see what it's going to take us to build our little uh, RTL SDR receiver on the cheap. The first thing we need is a uh, is one of the new RTL SDR dongles and uh, Here's one that I purchased on eBay. It was total cost was it's still in the package. I haven't opened this one. Total cost was seven dollars and eighty nine cents delivered to the door, and it includes the the dongle. Here is the key part. It includes all the technology that we need to make this SDR receiver work. Basically, we don't use the antenna. It's kind of worthless in our application, and the little channel changer thing here, and also the antenna cable on the back. We don't use those. We do use the dongle, and the other thing we have to purchase is a special cable, like this one here, that actually connects to the special jack in the dongle and come on, comes out to a uh, to a BNC uh, jack that we can connect up to our setup here. And that was about two dollars and fifty cents on eBay as well. So the key things we need to make this work are an outside antenna. In this case, let's just go with 40 meters. So we have a 40 meter dipole connected up outside. Then we come on in and we're going to need a bandpass filter after that. I found that this is, uh, is necessary to get the right sensitivity uh, and the right selectivity in the system. So the bandpass filter is homebrew here as well. Uh, the one I'm using is in this gray box and it's actually, a, I've got a 20 and a 40 meter uh, bandpass filter in there that are selectable. Pick either one I want. Uh, they look very much like this one. This is a little uh, homebrew bandpass filter for 15 meters. And uh, we have them for all the bands that we use and uh, basically just a piece of perf board in there, a little five pole uh, uh, filter with uh, uh, inductive input and output. Uh, there's lots of uh, specifications for how to wind the coils and some little uh, 40, uh, 40 uh, picofarad uh, variable capacitors, one on each side there that you can tune and uh, get yourself a nice, uh, a nice band pass uh, filter for each one of the bands of interest. So we went with this one here in our setup. We got it set for 40 meters now, and it's on. After the bandpass filter, we're going to go to. Um, uh, we need a we need some amplification in the chain. I found and uh, a nice uh, 20 dB broadband amplifier does the job real nicely here. In this case, it's a <coughs> I've got it in a little blue box that previously and its life was an MFJ single sideband filter, but like so often I do, I ended up repurposing the box for this need. And there's just a little uh, 2N5109 uh, amplifier. There's uh, lots of circuits uh, for that. It's a low noise amplifier. The, the part itself, the, the transistor is about a uh, oh, dollar and a half or a dollar, something like that. It's not very expensive, but it's low noise. It's quiet. 
and uh, the circuit's relatively simple. It makes a nice broadband 20 dB amplifier. So in our case, we're going from the bandpass filter through the amplifier, and then we're going to get into our um, our up converter. And this guy uh, drops. Th this guy is our uh, uh, based around our our much used uh, SA602 or SA612. They're both equivalent uh, mixer. Uh, and uh, basically, we have a Os a signal input and we're going to mix that with another oscillator signal and the outputs of that are going to be high and low and one of those we're going to pick off and use on down the chain and in this case uh, because the uh, the RTL SDR dongle is primarily a VHF device it works well above 70 80 megahertz on up to four or five hundred megahertz I believe we want to get our HS signal, uh, the sweet spot is going to be to get that up above 100 megahertz with our up converter. So that then the dongle and the software that goes with it that's available will be able to process our signals correctly. So uh, what we want to do is, uh, I've, I've experimented with several different uh, frequency oscillators and end, ended up with a 125 megahertz oscillator which is right here. Little 5 volt, 5 volt guys, they're put out a great sine wave signal and uh, you can get these all over the internet as well they're cheap and we have the SA612 in the center there that's our little mixer signals coming in from the antenna going into that mixing with this 125 megahertz signal and there's a little, also a little uh, voltage uh, regulator on the bo on board here a 5 volt regulator so we can power this little guy anywhere from 8 up to 14 volts or so Okay, so we're going to mix uh, 7 megahertz coming in with our 125 megahertz oscillator, and that gives us 132 megahertz signal coming out, which, uh, which we will then uh, feed into our dongle, and then that's, that's the signal that we're going to be dealing with, which for us is 40 meters, and the system recognizes it as 132 megahertz. That same process works for any of the bands that we pick. So the next step will be to look at the software is going to end up being a key component of this. Now, in the case of this hardware, the bandpass filter, the, the uh, broadband amplifier, and the uh, up converter itself, those could easily be built into one small box. I just happen to have done a prototype this way. In fact, it would be much better to put all three of those guys maybe in a box like this one. So you have an input coming from your antenna and output going to the dongle. The dongle goes into the USB jack on your laptop, and you're off and running.